Hello, uh, I'm here with another video uh, related to solving a problem related to kinetics of particles. So here we have this kid who is going around this half pipe, you know, half circular pipe here on this skateboard. And let's say if we neglect friction here, neglect friction, and say the uh, the skate uh, the the kid starts say right here with zero speed so initial velocity is zero and we want to let's say find the normal force that the uh, the half pipe exerts on this at any angle theta let's say um, I just want to uh, sh actually show you without proving it to you that actually in, in the absence of friction, if the, uh, the kid starts at zero speed on top of this, you know, half pipe, it actually its motion or its velocity is based on free fall motion. So actually constant acceleration based on gravity, we know one of the equations that we can use is this equation. So actually based on the height here, whatever this height is, if you call this edge, right? Uh, if the initial velocity is zero and we say acceleration is minus g and let's say s zero is zero and s is minus h below then actually velocity square becomes 2gh and then velocity becomes the square root of 2gh where h actually based on this picture if we say the radius is r the radius actually is given here and and it's actually for what i want to show you is irrelevant the radius so actually the speed at any instant the speed of this uh, skater here at any instant would be equal to square root of 2gh and that h as you could see in the picture is r sine theta so this would be r sine theta so basically velocity would be square root of 2g r sine theta of course this is assuming there is no friction okay so <clears throat> Let's draw a free body diagram. Actually, let me go ahead and erase this here since I don't need them. Let me actually draw a free body diagram for you here. So let's define our axes for uh, applying the equation of motion. So let's say this is the tangential axis, tangent to the path. And clearly this would be the normal axis pointing to the center of curvature. So the radius of curvature here is R, in this case, four meters. But as I said, I'm not gonna even use the four meters here. In other words, and it doesn't depend on that radius. So what I want to find is actually this normal force here, N, right? And what else do I have? I just have the weight of this guy, W, right? So there are two forces acting on this kid, a normal force and the weight. So now we know that actually this angle here is also theta. So if we go ahead and write the equation of motion in the normal direction, say so some of the forces in normal equal mass times normal acceleration, and take this to be our positive normal as you can see in the picture. Notice that the component of the weight along the normal axis would be this guy, this component, which happens to be W sine theta. So W sine theta, the weight times sine of that angle. Of course, angle is measured from here, from this horizontal position equal mass times normal acceleration. What is normal acceleration? Normal acceleration actually is V squared over rho. So velocity, we have it here. If we square that, the radical is gone. So that's 2gr sine theta. And if we divide it by the, uh, the radius of curvature r, look what happens to the normal acceleration. It becomes 2 actually g sine theta. And if we put that right over here, mass times normal acceleration. Uh, of course, I forgot N, the most important thing. So uh, the uh, let's go back. So this is W sine theta going in the negative direction. I forgot, of course, my N. Here we go. N minus W sine theta. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think I got too excited. Uh, anyways, uh, so our objective is to find this normal force. So let's go ahead and find N now. So look, W is mg. So uh, so this mg here becomes 
W. So we have a W sine theta plus 2 W sine theta, right? So look what happens. Interesting equation. We get 3 W sine theta. This is, of course, um, only applies when there is no friction and velocity is determined based on this relation. So now you see how the radius actually doesn't play any role in calculation of this normal force. So let's say if the, the mass of this kid uh, is 50 kilograms, about 110 pounds, uh, W becomes mg, so 50 times 9.81. So that's about 490.5 newtons. So N would be three times that. So let's say we want to do it right at the angle 90 degree where this actually becomes, when the kid passes this position. When the kid passes this position, the angle would be 90 degrees. So looking for the maximum normal force, sine 90 of course would be one, right? So this would be just three W, three times 490.5. It's about 1471.5 Newtons. So one thing we notice here actually, guys, is that uh, first of all, the maximum normal force uh, happens at the 90 degree. And at that 90 degree, regardless of, uh, you know, the weight of the object, uh, the weight of the kid, we have three times W because sine 90 is one. So in a way you could say you have a three G force, three G force, applied on the uh, the kid. Okay, uh, I'll show you in the next video maybe the proof of why this velocity is equal to square root of 2gh or 2gr sine theta. Thank you for listening and watching.